Cambridge Secondary One Checkpoint. English as a second language. Listening. October 2019. There are six parts to the test. You will hear each part twice. For each part of the test, there will be time for you to look through the questions and time for you to check your answers. Write your answers on the question paper. The recording will now be stopped. Please ask any questions now because you must not speak during the test. Now open your question paper and look at part one. There are five questions in this part. For each question, there are three pictures and a short recording. Choose the correct picture and circle the letter A, B, or C below it. Before we start, here is an example. Why did Jason visit Ali? I'm glad you're feeling better, Ali. Did your friend Jason give you another book to read? Not this time, Dad. They made cakes in class today, and Jason brought one for me. Lucky you. Anyway, back to school tomorrow. I'll go on the bus with Jason. Oh, I'll need a letter from you explaining why I was off school. The answer is B. Look at the three pictures for question one now. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear each recording twice. 1. What time does the sports shop open on Saturday? Do you know what time the sports shop opens, Jane? I need some new socks. I think it's 9 o'clock, isn't it? Why? I have football practice on Saturday at 10 and I want to go there before then. Oh, look, I've just checked on my phone. It doesn't open till half past nine. You'll have to be quick. Now listen again. Do you know what time the sports shop opens, Jane? I need some new socks. I think it's nine o'clock, isn't it? Why? I have football practice on Saturday at ten and I want to go there before then. Oh, look, I've just checked on my phone. It doesn't open till half past nine. You'll have to be quick. Two. Where did the boy complete the school project? Are those library books in your bedroom for your school homework, Mark? Yes, Mum. A project about African animals. But I've done it now. I went to the park to finish it because the school library was full. Well, I'd prefer you to do your schoolwork inside. OK. If I don't want to be in the library, I'll do it at home. Now listen again. Are those library books in your bedroom for your school homework, Mark? Yes, Mum. A project about African animals. But I've done it now. I went to the park to finish it because the school library was full. Well, I'd prefer you to do your schoolwork inside. OK. If I don't want to be in the library, I'll do it at home. Three. Which is the girls' volleyball kit? I like your volleyball kit. Black and white look cool together. Thanks. I only had to get a new white shirt. I already had black shorts. And did you get to choose the black number you wanted for your shirt? Yeah. And our trainers can be any colour too. Mine are black, but most of the team wear white ones. Now listen again. I like your volleyball kit. Black and white look cool together. Thanks. I only had to get a new white shirt. I already had black shorts. And did you get to choose the black number you wanted for your shirt? Yeah. And our trainers can be any colour too. Mine are black, but most of the team wear white ones. Four. What was the boy doing before his mother phoned? 
Hi, Tom. I'll be home late, so if you're hungry, make yourself a sandwich or something. Hi, Mum. Actually, Dad's home, and I just made some for us both. Oh, that's good. What about your homework? Have you got much? Quite a lot. Dad says he'll help me with that after I help him wash the car. Now listen again. Hi, Tom. I'll be home late, so if you're hungry, make yourself a sandwich or something. Hi, Mum. Actually, Dad's home, and I just made some for us both. Oh, that's good. What about your homework? Have you got much? Quite a lot. Dad says he'll help me with that after I help him wash the car. Five. Which fruit juice do they decide to buy? Look, if we buy two bottles of grape juice, we get one free. Yes, but Mum doesn't like it. She says it's too sweet for her. Let's get pear instead. OK, but it's expensive. It's twice as much as the apple juice. I know, but it is Mum's favourite, and we can get the cheap one next time. Now listen again. Look, if we buy two bottles of grape juice, we get one free. Yes, but Mum doesn't like it. She says it's too sweet for her. Let's get pear instead. OK, but it's expensive. It's twice as much as the apple juice. I know, but it is Mum's favourite, and we can get the cheap one next time. That is the end of part one. Now turn to part two, questions six to ten. For each question, there are three pictures and a short recording. Choose the correct picture and circle the letter A, B or C below it. Listen carefully. You will hear each recording twice. 6. What does the girl need in her bedroom? When you come back from university for the holidays, Luke, you'll see my new bedroom. I can't believe Mum and Dad have given you my old room. What have you done with all my books? There are lots of shelves in your new bedroom, more than in mine. I'm trying to persuade them to get me a new chest of drawers because I can't fit all my clothes in the cupboard. Anyway, you'll love my big mirror. It's where you used to have your football posters on the wall. Now listen again. When you come back from university for the holidays, Luke, you'll see my new bedroom. I can't believe Mum and Dad have given you my old room. What have you done with all my books? There are lots of shelves in your new bedroom, more than in mine. I'm trying to persuade them to get me a new chest of drawers because I can't fit all my clothes in the cupboard. Anyway, you'll love my big mirror. It's where you used to have your football posters on the wall. Seven. What is Jeremy doing now? Hello, Jeremy? Oh, hi, Granny. I'm glad you called. I need your help. Sure. Well, I'm trying to make Dad a birthday cake, but it's more complicated than I thought. Have you got a recipe? Yes, and I've been to the store twice now to buy all the ingredients. I tried to follow the instructions, but it didn't work the first time, and I had to throw the cake away. That's why I'm checking the recipe to see what I did wrong. I'd like to try again. Okay, I'll help you. Now listen again. Hello, Jeremy? Oh, hi, Granny. I'm glad you called. I need your help. Sure. Well, I'm trying to make Dad a birthday cake, but it's more complicated than I thought. Have you got a recipe? Yes, and I've been to the store twice now to buy all the ingredients. I tried to follow the instructions, but it didn't work the first time, and I had to throw the cake away. That's why I'm checking the recipe to see what I did wrong. I'd like to try again. OK, I'll help you.
Eight. What must the boy return? Our system shows you borrowed the book How to Mix Like a Famous DJ. Please come to the library by Thursday the twenty ninth to avoid a fine. You would normally have the option to take this item out again if no one else has requested it, but unfortunately someone has reserved this item. You might also be interested in our monthly Teen Talk magazine or our selection of CDs produced by some well-known disc jockeys. You can borrow most of these items for up to three weeks. Now listen again. Our system shows you borrowed the book How to Mix Like a Famous DJ. Please come to the library by Thursday the twenty ninth to avoid a fine. You would normally have the option to take this item out again if no one else has requested it, but unfortunately someone has reserved this item. You might also be interested in our monthly Teen Talk magazine or our selection of CDs produced by some well-known disc jockeys. You can borrow most of these items for up to three weeks. Nine. What did the students see at the museum? I thought the class trip to the museum was amazing, and I'm still trying to imagine what life was like before there was any electricity. <laughs> I know, and kids couldn't play computer games or do homework on the laptops. Yeah. And how did girls ever play in those uncomfortable dresses they had back then? <laughs> I really don't know,、um, but I wish the museum had some old-fashioned toys and things like that, not just what people wore centuries ago.、Mm, me too. Now listen again. I thought the class trip to the museum was amazing. And I'm still trying to imagine what life was like before there was any electricity. <laughs> I know, and kids couldn't play computer games or do homework on the laptops. Yeah, and how did girls ever play in those uncomfortable dresses they had back then? <laughs> I really don't know,、um, but I wish the museum had some old-fashioned toys and things like that, not just what people wore centuries ago.、Mm, me too. Ten. What is the talk at college about today? Hello, everyone. Thanks for coming to my careers talk. I'm here to tell you about the world of photography, where you can travel the world, and where being professional is as important as being creative. The job is full of variety. Recently, I was involved with Transatlantic Airlines, working with some of their pilots on an exciting new project. Next month, a colleague is staying in London, where she'll work with architects and designers who are planning a new stadium there. There's always something interesting going on. Now listen again. Hello, everyone. Thanks for coming to my careers talk. I'm here to tell you about the world of photography. Where you can travel the world, and where being professional is as important as being creative. The job is full of variety. Recently, I was involved with Transatlantic Airlines, working with some of their pilots on an exciting new project. Next month, a colleague is staying in London, where she'll work with architects and designers who are planning a new stadium there. There's always something interesting going on. That is the end of part two. Now turn to part three, questions eleven to fifteen. You will hear people talking in five different situations. For each question, circle the correct answer A, B, or C. Listen carefully. You will hear each recording twice. Eleven. You hear two girls talking about a book they've both read. What do they agree about? A. 
the story was sometimes confusing. B, the ending was disappointing. C, the descriptions of nature were boring. Have you finished reading Strange Summer yet? Yeah, last week. Me too. I couldn't believe how it ended. Yeah, I was expecting the end to be sad. I was pleased it wasn't. I hate sad endings, but the story was a bit too complicated. There were lots of characters, but I didn't think that was a problem. For me, really, it was just too long. Yes, there was too much detail about the trees and flowers and stuff. That sort of thing is really dull. I like events to move along faster. Well, yes, that's what makes a novel exciting. Now listen again. Have you finished reading Strange Summer yet? Yeah, last week. Me too. I couldn't believe how it ended. Yeah, I was expecting the end to be sad. I was pleased it wasn't. I hate sad endings, but the story was a bit too complicated. There were lots of characters, but I didn't think that was a problem. For me, really, it was just too long. Yes, there was too much detail about the trees and flowers and stuff. That sort of thing is really dull. I like events to move along faster. Well, yes, that's what makes a novel exciting. Twelve. You hear two friends talking about a school tennis lesson. How did the boy feel during the lesson? A. He didn't want to try new techniques. B. He was embarrassed about making mistakes. C. He was surprised he was making such good progress. Oh, that tennis lesson really pushed us, but they're always difficult. I liked learning that special way of hitting the ball, but I hated getting things wrong in front of the whole class. If we spent more time practicing how to hit the ball harder, I think I'd improve more quickly. But you were awesome. Well, it was challenging having to try different styles, and I felt so silly when I missed some shots. But I was pleased with how I played overall. I'm definitely getting better, but it takes time. I want to be a great tennis player now. Now listen again. Oh, that tennis lesson really pushed us, but they're always difficult. I liked learning that special way of hitting the ball, but I hated getting things wrong in front of the whole class. If we spent more time practicing how to hit the ball harder, I think I'd improve more quickly. But you were awesome. Well, it was challenging having to try different styles, and I felt so silly when I missed some shots. But I was pleased with how I played overall. I'm definitely getting better, but it takes time. I want to be a great tennis player now. Thirteen. You hear a man talking on the radio about a TV series. What is the man doing? A. Telling listeners what happens next in the series. B. Recommending that listeners should visit a website about the series. C. Persuading listeners to watch the next program in the series. And the next part of MacAndrew, the TV series set in the charming Scottish fishing village of Gartiloch, is on tonight. Although you might never guess it from the rather dull website about the series, it really is drama at its best. If you think you can predict what's going to happen next, then text or email your ideas to me, and I'll share them with all our listeners. It'll be interesting to see whether anyone gets it right. And of course, there's only one way to find out. It's been interesting to see how the different characters have developed and generally been killed. Now listen again. And the next part of MacAndrew, the TV series set in the charming Scottish fishing village of Gartiloch, is on tonight. 
Although you might never guess it from the rather dull website about the series, it really is drama at its best. If you think you can predict what's going to happen next, then text or email your ideas to me, and I'll share them with all our listeners. It'll be interesting to see whether anyone gets it right. And of course, there's only one way to find out. It's been interesting to see how the different characters have developed and generally been killed. Fourteen. You hear two friends talking about a documentary they watched. What do the two friends agree about the documentary? A. It explains an issue in an original way. B. It will persuade people to change their habits. C. Some parts of it were disappointing. Did you watch that documentary, the one about all of the plastic in our oceans? Yeah, but I've watched ones about pollution before. They always make me feel sad. Well, I think this one will change people's minds because of the way it was filmed. It's not like anything I've seen before. Oh, you mean the part when the pile of plastic on the beach was animated to show what would happen if no one did anything? That was a creative way to look at the problem. But I still don't think people will do things differently after watching it. Now listen again. Did you watch that documentary, the one about all of the plastic in our oceans? Yeah, but I've watched ones about pollution before. They always make me feel sad. Well, I think this one will change people's minds because of the way it was filmed. It's not like anything I've seen before. Oh, you mean the part when the pile of plastic on the beach was animated to show what would happen if no one did anything? That was a creative way to look at the problem. But I still don't think people will do things differently after watching it. Fifteen. You hear a man talking with his daughter about her school history presentation. What has the girl done to prepare? A. She has read about giving talks. B. She has written some notes. C. She has chosen a few pictures. Do you want to practice your history presentation now? Maybe later, Dad. First, I'd like to write down a few things, just in case I forget what I'm going to say. Good idea. But just make very brief notes and only use them to remind you of the main points. Reading from a piece of paper will make the audience bored. Yep, you're right. That's what I've just found out from this magazine. There's a whole section about presentations and how to do them well. It also gives advice on how to select the best pictures, which might be helpful. Now listen again. Do you want to practice your history presentation now? Maybe later, Dad. First, I'd like to write down a few things, just in case I forget what I'm going to say. Good idea. But just make very brief notes and only use them to remind you of the main points. Reading from a piece of paper will make the audience bored. Yep, you're right. That's what I've just found out from this magazine. There's a whole section about presentations and how to do them well. It also gives advice on how to select the best pictures, which might be helpful. That is the end of part three. Now turn to part four, questions 16 to 20. You will hear part of an interview with a young man called Matthew, who is interested in superheroes, imaginary cartoon characters with unusual abilities. For each question, circle the correct answer A, B or C. You now have 45 seconds to look at the questions for part 4.
Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear the recording twice. Hi, Matthew. You have a really interesting hobby, don't you? Yes, I collect things to do with superheroes. You know, imaginary characters who can do things that are impossible in the real world, like Superman, who's amazingly strong and can fly, and Spider Man, who can climb up any building. I've got a huge collection of comics, albums, pictures, and posters. How did you become interested in collecting things like this? As a kid, I used to go into town with my big brother. He always used to meet one of his schoolmates and stay chatting to him for ages. One day, I ended up at this store selling old comics in the market. It had a friendly owner who let me read them and didn't charge me much for the ones I wanted. It all went from there.、Hmm. Who's your favourite superhero character? Superman. The first comic I ever picked up was about him. The stuff he does is amazing. I guess he's quite funny, but that's not why I like him. For me, It's as if he's trying to help humans and be part of our world, despite being a superhero. I think that's really great. Maybe other superheroes are more original and can do more unexpected things. That's not as important for me, though. Where do you find the things you collect? Well, I go to superhero exhibitions when I can, but only to look at new posters or albums. It's the old stuff I want. It's great to be able to actually look through the comics. Which is why I rarely buy anything online. I prefer going to my favourite shops to get things, like many other collectors. What's the most valuable thing you have? Well, things cost more if the artist or author signs them. Last week I saw a Superman poster with a signature on it. That was over a thousand dollars. There's a comic in my collection that I got as a kid. I didn't realise at the time that the author had signed it. That's probably worth as much as all my posters and albums put together. <laughs> wow! Have you any advice for kids who'd also like to be collectors? Like me, they'll probably end up mainly collecting stuff about one character they like. That's okay, but you don't have to. What you should do is check carefully that any poster, album, or comic isn't torn or damaged in any way. Each artist has their own particular style, so you'll soon get to know which ones you prefer. Well, thank you, Matthew. That was certainly. Really... Now listen again. Hi, Matthew. You have a really interesting hobby, don't you? Yes, I collect things to do with superheroes. You know, imaginary characters who can do things that are impossible in the real world, like Superman, who's amazingly strong and can fly, and Spider Man, who can climb up any building. I've got a huge collection of comics, albums, pictures, and posters. How did you become interested in collecting things like this? As a kid, I used to go into town with my big brother. He always used to meet one of his schoolmates and stay chatting to him for ages. One day, I ended up at this store selling old comics in the market. It had a friendly owner who let me read them and didn't charge me much for the ones I wanted. It all went from there.、Hmm. Who's your favourite superhero character? Superman. The first comic I ever picked up was about him. The stuff he does is amazing. I guess he's quite funny, but that's not why I like him. For me, it's as if he's trying to help humans and be part of our world, despite being a superhero. I think that's really great. Maybe other superheroes are more original and can do more unexpected things. That's not as important for me, though. Where do you find the things you collect? Well, I go to superhero exhibitions when I can, but only to look at new posters or albums. It's the old stuff I want. It's great to be able to actually look through the comics, which is why I rarely buy anything online. I prefer going to my favourite shops to get things, like many other collectors. What's the most valuable thing you have? Well, things cost more if the artist or author signs them. Last week, I saw a Superman poster with a signature on it. That was over a thousand dollars. There's a comic in my collection that I got as a kid. I didn't realise at the time that the author had signed it. That's probably worth as much as all my posters and albums put together. <laughs> wow. Have you any advice for kids who'd also like to be collectors? Like me, they'll probably end up mainly collecting stuff about one character they like. That's okay, but you don't have to. 
What you should do is check carefully that any poster, album or comic isn't torn or damaged in any way. Each artist has their own particular style, so you'll soon get to know which ones you prefer. Well, thank you, Matthew. That was certainly... That is the end of part four. Now turn to part five, questions 21 to 25. You will hear a teenager talking to students about playing for a youth orchestra. For each question, fill in the missing information in the numbered space. You now have 20 seconds to look at the questions for part five. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear the recording twice. If you play a musical instrument, why not join the local youth orchestra? We're always looking for new members aged between 12 and 17 from schools in this area. I've been playing with the orchestra for one year now and joined in September last year when they were looking for new members to play the keyboards and piano. At the moment, though, we really need people with skills on the violin for our next concert program. I can tell you it's a lot of fun as well as hard work. You have to attend weekly practice sessions and sometimes more often just before a concert. The sessions are easy to get to as most of them are held at the university. It's an excellent place to practice, but if it's not free, we can use the concert hall in town. One of the most exciting things about being a member of the orchestra is that you get to go on an international tour in the summer each year. We travel around one country in Europe playing concerts in different cities. Previous years have included tours around Germany and Spain, and last summer it was Italy. Our next one will be in Poland. Last year's trip was amazing, and I had a great time not just playing, but spending time with other young people who love music. We usually fly to the country and travel by train, but next year we'll go by plane and then hire our own bus, because that'll be much easier. If you're interested in joining and want to find out more, you should look at the orchestra's website. If you want to write it down, it's www.ayot.org. There's plenty more information on there and some great photos, too. So I hope that some of you join us. It's going to be lots of fun. Now listen again. If you play a musical instrument, why not join the local youth orchestra? We're always looking for new members aged between 12 and 17 from schools in this area. I've been playing with the orchestra for one year now and joined in September last year when they were looking for new members to play the keyboards and piano. At the moment, though, we really need people with skills on the violin for our next concert program. I can tell you it's a lot of fun as well as hard work. You have to attend weekly practice sessions and sometimes more often just before a concert. The sessions are easy to get to as most of them are held at the university. It's an excellent place to practice, but if it's not free, we can use the concert hall in town. One of the most exciting things about being a member of the orchestra is that you get to go on an international tour in the summer each year. We travel around one country in Europe playing concerts in different cities. Previous years have included tours around Germany and Spain, and last summer it was Italy. Our next one will be in Poland. Last year's trip was amazing, and I had a great time not just playing, but spending time with other young people who love music. We usually fly to the country and travel by train, but next year we'll go by plane and then hire our own bus, because that'll be much easier. If you're interested in joining and want to find out more, you should look at the orchestra's website. If you want to write it down, it's www.ayot.org. 
There's plenty more information on there and some great photos too. So I hope that some of you join us. It's going to be lots of fun. That is the end of part five.